Well, I also want to uh, let you know that if you are uh, following along with us in our book, the, the Way of Grace, that we've been using for this uh, teaching series, uh, it, we're going to continue on in this book and then the series that we're doing. It's in actually chapter 5, and it's not ironic because nothing that God does is ironic, but the, the focal point of our time this morning is on trusting God. And in a midst where things seem to be uh, chaotic and going all crazy and, and unsure of what's going on around us, uh, it's good to be reminded of the grace of trust, that we can trust in God, that God is indeed trustworthy. And so we're going to zero in our, our thoughts on that, on that portion of, of God's character and who God is this morning. Uh, if you have a Bible with you, uh, I'd invite you to open it up. Uh, we're going to be studying a little bit together. We're going to walk ourselves through. If you don't have a Bible, I'm going to give you a few minutes to kind of go to your room or whatever and pick it up or grab your phone and, and, uh, and grab it there. But we're going to talk about the idea of trust and how we can wa- walk in the way of grace of trust. Uh, now, you also may be wondering, how is it that you can participate in the service this morning as far as your giving and your tithes and offerings? And we want you to know that uh, if you go to our website, you can always give online there. There's a, there's a link that you can click uh, to give. You can do it a, a one-time gift that way, or you can set it up on a regular basis. Uh, so if you're wanting to participate in your worship by giving of your tithes and offerings this morning, you can still do that uh, and encourage you to do it online, and, and you can be a, a participant in that regard there. Well, this morning we were going to show you a, a video clip, but there's a movie that, kind of a, an obscure movie that came out a couple of years ago where uh, this aspect of trying to trust in something, and Matt Damon's main character there, and he, he walks up to the edge of the line, or walks up to the edge of this of uh, this wall, this area that he's supposed to jump off and trust the person behind him. And he turns around and says, I'm alive today because I trust no one. And he just, that's all it is. I'm going to trust myself and that's it. And there's a, there's a tendency in our culture to kind of believe that, that if you're going to survive in the culture that we live in, that you're to trust no one. You don't know who to trust. You don't know where you're going to get your information from. And, and whether it's, it's good stuff or bad stuff, you can't trust anybody else except yourself. And so we just simply try to trust ourselves. And I can somewhat understand that because sometimes you, you've seen abuses of information and, and false information that's spread out over places and it's hard to understand who do you trust and where can you put your confidence in. So at some level I can understand it. It's at least understandable. But the irony is when you seek to try and control your situation, when you seek to gain trust and, and only trust yourself, then you really become more isolated from everybody in anyone around and the more isolated you are the less fulfilling your life really is and unintentionally your lack of trust can put up a a a barrier between you and other people and unintentionally that barrier can even be between you and God where when you see when you cease to trust you can actually unintentionally cease to trust God and everybody in scriptures all throughout the scriptures older testament and newer testament is told to trust God in God, that God is trustworthy and that we can trust in Him. So the book that we're using in this series, this Glandian Carney book, Way of Grace, uh, on page 73, Glandian defines trust uh, in this way. Uh, he says that the grace of trust is a firm belief in the truth of God's Word, His ability and His character. A trust in God is a firm belief in the truth of God's Word, His ability, and his character. And just as we've done this whole series, as we've been seeking to learn how we can grow in grace, how we can grow our life, to that trusting in God, in other words, is not a one time thing. It's not a one time thing that happened five years ago or 30 years ago or five minutes ago. It's an ongoing aspect of our life that we would grow in our ability to trust in God's character, in his ability, in who he is. That we would grow in that. Remember, as we said the last couple of weeks, that grace has much to say about forgiveness, but grace has much to say about our life. And so learning to trust in God is not a one-time thing, but it's something that we grow in as we follow after the ways of God, as we learn to follow His ways. And as we learn to grow in this grace of trust, we will be different people, that the things that surround us and the things that are happening around us we will, it will, we will go through it in a different way. 
Because the grace of trust reminds us who we are, a firm grasp on our identity. And when we know who we are and whose we are, well, that makes all the difference. Now, trust me and and hear me what I'm saying. I'm I'm not suggesting that you take unnecessary risks of trust, that you just kind of walk out, risk everything, and just say, well, I'm just trusting. I'm being foolish, and that's not wise at all. I'm, I'm not suggesting that we be unwise in our life i'm not suggesting that at all we use discernment use witness or use uh, uh, wisdom in our life but our trust when we witness to the trust in god then we witness to a different way of living the goodness of god in our midst while we're surrounded by things that are going around us we trust in the god who's present in our midst and with all the stuff going on surrounding us obviously the stuff the health concerns with the coronavirus and even financial concerns and economic concerns and all the things that seem to surround us and all the information and all the things that we seem to be uh, afraid of and things that seem to kind of be running out of fear, we are called to trust. We're called to grow in the grace of trust. And as oftentimes when people are facing difficult situations, uh, health concerns or financial concerns relational concerns or other concerns when people are faced with concerns that seem like they surround you wherever you turn it's it's all encompassing i often draw people to a familiar psalm Uh, it's one that many of you will know it's many of you even may have committed to memory and this morning i'm going to walk us through the psalm and see if that we can learn a few things so i'm going to ask you to grab your bible open up to psalms the book of Psalms, and we're going to open up and read Psalm 23. And we're going to walk our way through there. And here's what I want you to do as we do it this morning. I want you to hold whatever difficult situation that you're facing this morning. Maybe it's, it's the stuff of the coronavirus around us. Maybe it's a relational issue with your family or your, between your siblings or your kids or your parents. Or maybe it's a financial issue. Or maybe it's some other health issue or something else. The difficult situation that you may be facing, I want you to hold that with you. Some source of doubt or insecurity or something that's around us. I want you to hold that. And as we hold that, I just simply want you to think about that issue as we dive into God's Word together. As we seek to understand who we are and what God declares over us, that we can walk this road in growing in the grace of trust. Hey, let me pray for us and we'll dive into Psalm 23 together and see what the Lord may teach us. Jesus, we're humbled again that you bring us together in this online format and help us now to center our thoughts away from the enemies and away from the, the things that surround us, but center our thoughts on you and who you are and who you declare we are, that we may grow in our trust in you, the sovereign good one that we can rely our whole life on. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, so I'm going to read Psalm 23, the whole Psalm 23, and then we're going to dive in to it and kind of take it piece by piece, and hopefully it's an encouragement to us along the way. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for You are with me. Your rod and Your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hey, there's a few things I want us to learn from this familiar passage. And again, maybe you have it committed to memory. But this morning I want to read it and dive into it afresh, anew, and see what God may teach us. The first thing I want us to notice in the passage here in in Psalm 23 is that God provides for His children. God provides for His children. Listen again in verses 1 through 3. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for His name's sake. David is, is describing and relating our life to God as a, a sheep to a shepherd, that our life 
to God is like he's our shepherd. And the shepherd's job is to provide for the sheep, to make sure that his flock is flourishing, to, to have what they need, to lead them to places where they are, are fully and, and content, that they have everything that they need. They lack nothing. The shepherd is the one that provides for the sheep. The shepherd is the one that provides protection for the sheep. Friends, I want to tell you that when you know the Lord is your shepherd, when you learn to trust, then you can see that He's trustworthy to provide for you. And you will grow in your contentment. That those verses will actually be true. That this is real about who God is. That He is our shepherd. We lack nothing. He provides for us. We have all that we need. Because the Good Shepherd is our shepherd. And I want you to think about who's writing this psalm. David is writing this psalm. And David, as you may or may not know, but David had his share of hardship. He had his share of anguish and sadness and bitterness and rejection and betrayal. He experienced all of that. And yet he knows the Lord is his shepherd and provides for his children. And while David had his fair share, fair share of hardship and difficulty and insecurity and doubts and questioning, he knew God as his shepherd and he knew that he lacked nothing. I have everything that I need because the Lord is my shepherd, because of the character of who he is and trust in who God is and his ability and his character. Well, that leads me to a peaceful life. Notice what David says in the imagery here. That we can rest in His provision because He lets us lie down in green pastures. He, he, the picture that He gives us is this restfulness in His provision for us. That while the enemy and while, while dangerous things surround us around, we can trust in God's provision for us. That there's contentment. That there's rest. We experience the rest and the refreshment in the midst of of the fear and the doubt and all the things surrounding us, we can grow in the grace of trust in the shepherd who provides. Who provides everything. Remember that growing in trust, the the grace of trust in God is a firm belief in God's ability to provide. God's character to protect His children. I don't know all that you're dealing with. I mean, I know some of the fear and the stuff that's surrounding us with our our current health situation and as a nation as a world i know that but i don't know all the other things that you're struggling with i don't know all the other financial things and the relational things aside from the world pandemic things i just hope that you know the lord is your shepherd in the midst of it i hope that you're not trying to trust only in yourself but you're learning to grow in the grace of trusting the Lord is your shepherd. I hope you know Him as your shepherd. I hope you do. But the second thing I want you to see is that God not only provides, but God comforts His children. In times of fear, in times of doubt, in times of anxiety, in times of worry, God comforts His children. Verse 4 in Psalm 23 Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now you don't have to live very long before you go through what could be described as a dark valley. Or as some translations say, through through death's valley. Even though I, I walk through the valley of death, in some translations say. Now you don't have to walk very long in your life to know a season in your life where it's a dark valley. It can be frightening and disheartening to go through because you don't know what lies on the other side. You don't know what's going to happen there. You, you, it's, it's confusing and you've never been there before and it seems like all the world is closing in on you and it can be fearsome. But here you're reminded that while we walk through dark valleys, our shepherd is with us. He walks with us. I don't fear any evil. Why? Because you are with me, David says. In the midst of the dark valley, you are with me. God not only provides for His children, He comforts them by being Emmanuel, God with us. 
It's echoed in the truth that we hear in Deuteronomy chapter 31. Moses is directing the young Joshua who's going to take over and lead the people of Israel. And he instructs them in in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6. He says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. It's the same words that Jesus has. In the last part of the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 28, when Jesus gives his disciples these orders, and he says, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I commanded you. And then he says, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. David uses the imagery in Psalm 23 as God is our shepherd, the one who provides that we have everything we need and the one who comforts because He's the one who walks with us, has not abandoned us, has not forgotten us. I hope that you know the Lord is your shepherd with whatever you're facing. That you would begin to see that God is trustworthy. God is trustworthy. In the middle here of the psalm, David shifts his imagery, one away from shepherd, and then he shifts to God as being a host for us, a a host, a hospitality of God. Listen to what it says in verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And here you see God is the host, and God is a host that rejoices over his children. Regardless of the external circumstances, regardless of the enemies that are surrounding us, we are guests at God's table. And he prepares a place for us to enjoy fellowship and friendship with them. And he prepares it and he says our cup overflows. I love that. I love the imagery there. That my cup is overflowing. It's as though my heart cannot, is not large enough to stand all of the blessings that God is pouring over us. All of the grace that I experience in my life. My heart is not large enough. My heart and my heart is overflowing with the blessing that God is providing for me. God rejoices over pouring blessing over us. Pouring forth blessing over us until our heart and our cup overflows. But there's times when our vision is captivated not by our overflowing blessing in our heart, but by the enemies and the things that surround us. All the the fear and the anxiety, the doubts and the insecurities, the shame of our bad behavior, the things that we have done in the past, all the things that line up, the reminders of our failures, all those things that surround us and remind us of how we have not measured up to God's good standard. We All of those things. And so our mind is captured by those things instead of our heart that is overflowing by the blessing and the grace that is God's life in our heart, we, we forget it. And yet God's grace invites us to sit down at a table that is prepared for us with blessings that overflow us. Overflow us. In the presence of all that is surrounding us, in the presence of all the fear and all the things that hurt us and all the things that, that threaten us, the, the trust or the invitation is to trust enough to sit down at a table that is set before you with a cup that overflows with God's blessings. The invitation is from God to, a, to have a still, quiet confidence in the grace of God to provide, to comfort, and to rejoice in giving us blessing in the midst of of what surrounds us. Not only does God rejoice over giving blessing and rejoice over His children, but He promises. God is a God of promises. Look at the way that David finishes the psalm in verse 6. He says, Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's a promise here that we have from God's Word. That God's goodness and faithful will follow us all the days of our life and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There are two things I want you to notice about this promise. The first thing I want you to see is that the word follow describes more of an active pursuit rather than a lag from behind, passive kind of like like a dog following you along kind of thing. This word that's described of, of the goodness and the mercy or the goodness and love following us all the days, it's, it's more of God pursuing us all the days of our life. As beloved children 
of God, God's goodness and His love and His blessing and His mercy and His grace pursues you. Hasn't left you alone. Hasn't left me alone. But is pursuing us. All the shame and all the things around us, all of the things that surround us, there's a promise from God that His goodness and His love are pursuing you. Are pursuing you. The second aspect of God's promise is this hope of an eternal destiny. The hope of an eternal destiny. So the grace of trust enables us to live with our citizenship in heaven. That our, our eyes and our minds are fixed on, on the hope that we have in a future good kingdom that is brought in all of its fulfillment. And there's something very substantial about us who trust in the eternal quality of God's good kingdom that one day all will be well and all manner of things will be well. And so we discipline ourselves to trust in that one day the king will indeed return and bring fulfillment to his kingdom and that all things will be restored to its rightful ways. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And until that day, Until that day when He comes in His glorious coming, we put our strength, we we find renewed strength in the grace of trust in who He is, in His Word, in His character, and in His ability. I I recognize that each one of us, we have a story, that, that you come and you're sitting, you're watching this video, you're watching this service, and you're carrying all sorts of insecurities and doubts and what ifs and wonderings. All the things that are surrounding you, it's like they're, they're causing the anxiety of these things that are, are surrounding you on all edges and all sites, all corners and stuff. But the focal point of Psalm 23 and the focal point of our life as kingdom people, Christ following people, is to focus on the person of Christ, to know him as our shepherd, the one that provides, the one that comforts, the one that rejoices. And the one that has promised not only to pursue us in the midst of our fear and doubt and anxiety, but the one who has promised an eternal destiny that we long for and we work for. That while the journey may be difficult at times, the arrival is worthwhile. The arrival is worthwhile. The Apostle Paul said it this way in Romans chapter 8, verse 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. Friends, only the love of God can satisfy your soul. Only the grace of God can do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Only the grace of God can give you rest in the midst of uncertainty. Only the grace of God can give you a a steadfastness in who God is and who he, who you are. And this isn't this isn't self help stuff. This isn't like just positive talk. Just think about the good stuff. This is true about who God is. As we know Him and we grow to experience Him as our shepherd who's with us in the darkest valleys, who hasn't left us, who hasn't left us alone, who hasn't abandoned us, but is walking with us, whose rod and staff comfort and guide and lead us in the midst of these things. My prayer is that we would grow in the grace of trust in the character of who God is, in His Word, in His ability to be with us. My prayer to you, for you today, it's pretty simple. That you would know God as your shepherd. And maybe that's, maybe that's a f- common and familiar thing to you. Maybe it's something that's been around for a long time and you're like, oh yeah, I know what that is. I know what that means. I know this psalm. I've, I've read it. I've memorized it since I was a kid. But can I invite you to really believe that God is your shepherd? That he's your shepherd. So how do you do that this morning? How do you do it this week in the midst of all the news feeds, in the midst of the fear and the anxiety and the things that are surrounding you? How do you grow in the grace of knowing that the Lord is your shepherd? Well, for that, I just have two quick suggestions for you that I pray that you would do this week to help you grow in, your, in the grace of trusting God and His work in Christ to bring rest to your souls. To experience Him as, and the provision that He gives and the comfort and the rejoicing and the promises of God. To grow in the grace of trust. First suggestion, read this psalm 
every day. Read Psalm 23. Slowly read it and read it with your imagination. Put yourself in the situation. See yourself as a sheep and the shepherd and see the table before you. See the cup that overflows with blessing. See it with your imagination. Read the psalm every day this week. Psalm 23. You may have it memorized, that's fine. Read it again. Read it and allow the truth of God's Word to wash over you, to remind you of the grace of trust. That whatever the situation you face, experience the Lord as your shepherd. You have everything you need. That He guides you. And even though you go through a dark valley, He is with you. Read Psalm 23 every day this week. Secondly, draw your mind on your blessings. Focus on your blessings rather than all the fear and the anxiety. It's too easy that we neglect the way in which God's grace has been active in our life, where we see God's active. What we focus on, what we spend our mind thinking about, often shapes how we live and our outlook and our experience of our life. Instead of resting in our blessings of God, we seem to be focused on the the evil, the things that are looming around us. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you to actually have a piece of paper, a notepad, a journal, or something. And once or twice this week, I want you to make a list of the various blessings that are in your life. To draw them to your mind. And really do this. Not just imagine it. Have a piece of paper, get a pen and pencil, and write out your blessings. Once or twice this week, go over them. And turn them into a prayer and thank your shepherd for the overflowing blessings in your heart. Grow in grace and trusting in the Lord to be your shepherd this week. Read Psalm 23 every day and make a list of your blessings and pray over them once or twice this week. And may we be different people and may we experience the rest of our souls And may we find the Lord to be faithful, trustworthy in a situation that seems doubtful and and insecure and fearful all around us. With whatever you're carrying with you, whatever burden you seem to be carrying, may you know that the Lord is your shepherd. You have everything you need. He provides for you, is comforting you. He's with you. He rejoices over you. He's trustworthy. Let's grow in that together. Let me pray for us. Jesus, it is good to be reminded that you are our shepherd. I pray for people that are listening to this, that are unsure if you're their shepherd. They're not sure if you're with them. They're not experiencing it, and I pray that they would open their heart to see you. That it wouldn't just be words on a page. It wouldn't just be words I speak. But Father, would you work in their hearts and would you soften their souls to experience you as their shepherd. That the truth of who you are, the trustworthiness of your character and your ability to do what you promise. Would you awaken our souls to experience that this week. And as we read over this psalm, may you refresh our souls. It's in your name we pray. Amen.